Hello everyone and a warm welcome to you. This is Inspire Africa with me, Barbara Lundu. Coming up on this episode, for the first story, we're heading to Uganda. You meet a young director who's been making the news ever since the studio in Kampala created an animated film for Disney. He'll explain the importance of this collaboration for animated films in Africa. Then we'll move to Rwanda. In Kigali, a former beauty queen has turned to motor racing. She explained why she has decided to enter this field, which is still predominantly male-dominated. Finally, we head to Libreville in Gabon for an interview with Alvin Yeno. The young entrepreneur has created an application to encourage people to donate blood for the sick. The country, like many others in Africa, has a shortage of donors. To create its new animated series, the famous American company Disney has called on several African directors. Among them is Ugandan Raymond Malinga. He opened his animation studio in Kampala in 2015 and is already considered a rising star of animated films on the continent. Far from the hills of Hollywood, the Stan episode animated series was created for Disney by directors from various African countries, including Zimbabwe, Nigeria and <laughs> Egypt. The small studio located in a district of Uganda's capital, Kampala, is also part of the adventure. Here, these young creators have imagined a story mixing traditional culture myths and futuristic technologies. The African animation industry is currently in its infancy, I would say, in Uganda and also across the African continent. But I think uh, with projects like Kizazimoto, Africa is showing that we are capable of telling stories that are unique and, um, we are, and, and very soon we'll be marching to the next phase of our industry. The collaboration with the Disney Plus platform is a major opportunity for the young director to open his studio in 2015. His first animated film, released in 2017, brought him international recognition. At my studio, we're all about breaking new ground. And um, we're all about pushing the industry as far as it can go, not only locally, but on the continent. So my view, um, how I felt was this is just another example of what can be done. To rise to the challenge, Malinga works with a team of 12 people, passionate creatives who must always remain at the cutting edge of technology. It's a nice opportunity to come here and tell our stories, our African stories. As we know, most of the times, these, these animated films that we see, we are always from other parts of other continents of the world. Comedian Daniel O'Mara voices a character in Her the Boy. I don't know if it says much to anyone else, but to me it means a lot that the Ugandan episode was episode one to get people to watch a series of animations. That speaks volumes about the potential we have. Now, I don't know if we are ready to like go bulk in this thing, because so far there's will be like no just a couple of animators who are doing it, but I believe it's a major step in the right direction. The animation industry in Africa is booming. Raymond Malinga hopes that on an international level, this type of collaboration will help bring more diversity to the sector. Career transition is never easy, but that hasn't stopped Queen Kalimpinya from getting into motorsport. We traveled to Kigali to meet this former Miss Rwanda contestant. She's one of the only women in this field, which is still largely dominated by men. After several days of waiting, Queen can finally test drive her car for the next race. The young woman has recently embarked on a career in motor racing, a far cry from the world she's used to. Yet this former finalist in the Miss Rwanda contest didn't hesitate to take a plunge into the unknown. I don't consider myself as well as someone who was in the beauty industry as such. So I attended Miss Rwanda, I participated in Miss Rwanda uh, with the project that I wanted to, uh, to have a platform to make it happen. So I don't consider myself as a beauty, beauty person though I attended Miss Randa, but I, yeah, I miss, uh, I miss uh, Miss Randa in its training side, the boot camp. The trainers from Miss Randa taught me that everything is possible. They taught me to have courage and confidence. So I think that I, I didn't hesitate to join motorsports because I had that no fear attitude. With time, the young woman has managed to carve out a place for herself in a world still largely dominated by men. 
motorsport is not friendly for men and women, mostly on me. It, it demands high mechanical skills and high really professional skills. You have to be quick. You have, it is demanding. So mostly on me as a, as a woman. First a co-driver, Queen is now a driver in her own right. She became the first woman to take part in the Rwanda Mountain Gorilla Rally, an international competition held every year in Kigali. Her trainer remembers her early days. Every weekend we were supposed to have trainings, intensive training sessions, I can say. Yeah, and it was quite expensive, very expensive for pads. She was breaking pads, she was uh, knocking the car everywhere. But now uh, I'm happy with her. She can manage to finish and to finish in good position. Queen and her entourage hope that her journey will inspire more women to enter the world of motorsport. In many African countries, the WHO has observed a shortage of blood. Donors are becoming rare even though their actions can help save lives. To raise awareness and encourage Gabonese people to give blood, our guest has created a free anonymous mobile app. The idea is simple. You register on the app as a donor or as a recipient and you receive notifications when a donation is needed or when there is a bag of blood available. Hello Alvin, how did you come up with the idea to create this app? And China was born out of a feeling of helplessness that affected my family in 2019, when we were faced with the urgency of having to find donors to save the life of a loved one who needed a blood transfusion. I realized that it was always the same process for other families of patients desperately looking for donors. There were posts on social media, WhatsApp, Facebook, which are not meant for that purpose. It was also the end of my studies and I needed a project, so that's how I got started. I started slowly because the idea was first and foremost to save my sister. Before launching the app, we started with WhatsApp and Facebook groups using what we had at the time. We really wanted to help these patients and families who were looking for donors, and later we were able to get the funds to develop an app. What is the average user profile? We have around 6,000 users, and according to our statistics, there are more men than women. They're all young and often no older than 35. What challenges do you face with your app? The challenge is to turn a user into a donor. In general, people are moved by the issue of blood donation and by this project, an application that saves lives. But sometimes when it comes to giving blood, there are still fears, doubts and concerns. There are a lot of taboos around it. We need to debunk these fears. We need more testimonials and we need to explain where blood goes. Sometimes patients wonder where the blood they've donated goes. They need to know more about the blood donation process from A to Z. So the challenge is to get these users to donate, so that it doesn't become just another app on their phones. Last question, what are your long-term ambitions? My aim is to provide a digital solution to a specific problem. We're no different from other countries, other continents, other young people. Africa's youth can also provide solutions to real, everyday problems. And as a woman in tech, I want younger women to feel that they have a place in tech, because we still think it's a field reserved for men, but it's not. As proof, when you go to a website, you can't guess whether it was made by a man or a woman. The result is what really matters. Alvin Yenou, thank you for being with us and telling us about the app you created in China to encourage blood donation. Thank you.
The show is coming to an end. You can watch it again on our website on africanews.com. Don't hesitate to follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We end this episode with images from Nigeria. Every year in the southwest of the country, the Uju de Oba festival celebrates the rich culture and history of the Yoruba people. A day of celebration where fashion and elegance are also in the spotlight, as you'll see soon. Enjoy this image and see you soon. Ebadeni, 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 ebad